Okay. All right. So we are ready for Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and jump in here, and then I'll talk about a few things. Can someone please read Revelation chapter 8, verses 1 through 5? When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Then I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer, and he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth. And there were fields of thunder, rumbling, a splash of light, and an earthquake. Right. Okay. So we have the seventh seal. It's broken. Uh, and then uh, we're transitioning to the seven, the seven trumpets, but in this process, what do we have here? What's, what's the angel standing before? The altar. Which altar? Well, the altar and with what? With what? Incense. Yeah, with incense, right? So we have the uh, standing before the altar, and this angel has... Uh, Uh, with the censor, right? With the incense. Standing for the altar with the censor. With incense to offer, which are the what? Prayers of the saints. Yeah, the prayers of the saints, right? Uh, the censor, the incense, are the prayers, right? The prayers of the saints. Now, something kind of interesting here, and we have to go back into the Old Testament thing. Uh, unpopular opinion, I think we should still have incense in the church. I know that's unpopular, people don't like that. Um, I like the symbolism of it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me go to the Because if you enter the Holy of Holies without some sort of intercession, and you 
come into the presence of God, just this unrighteous, unclean person on his own, coming before the presence of God, what's going to happen? He's going to be burnt up. <laughs> Die, right? And so you have the high priest actually bringing this incense before, offering the sacrifice, and the incense swells in front of the mercy seat. And so why are the prayers of the saints acceptable? Because the high priest is bringing it in. Because the high priest is part of that mediation. Right? Let, let's look at this and I'll explain this a bit more. So turn... How, how much incense would it take to cover it? I mean, like, I, I can't imagine how, how much they'd be burning. Yeah, so think, think in Old Testament terms. Um, if this is something which is, if, you, if you're not fully covering it, you're going to die, how much would you burn? <laughs> I mean, I'm almost like, died, died just breathing it or yeah. something. You would, you would burn it a lot, yeah. right? <laughs> um, it's, it's kind of like, you know, the... Will barrel. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. The, it, it's uh, kind of like the, the um, during Passover, you know, you have the blood on the doorpost. If God told you, make sure you put the blood on the doorpost so that the angel of death passes over, how much blood would you put on your doorpost? Yeah. Every last drop you could, right? <laughs> You'd be like splashing it up there, right? Um, yeah. The uh, it always cracks me up when I see pictures of the Passover. It's like this little tiny mark of blood. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Um, so let's turn to real quick, uh, and then I'll, I'll explain this a little more. So uh, Leviticus chapter sixteen. So the so and that and we see Christ fulfilling both of those things, right? He is 
slaughtered on behalf of the people and we are washed in his blood. And all of our sin comes upon him and he is sent out. He, he is sent out from God's presence. Right? And where does that happen when he's like, sent out from God's presence? No. The last three hours on the cross. Yeah, so it's when he dies. Yeah, it's, it's right, right leading up to when he dies. Which is just a weird thing to think about. God separated from himself when he died. I mean, that's, that's weird. <laughs> All right. So, in the Day of Atonement, chapter 16, we have these uh, sin offerings going on, like I said. And then if you look at chapter 16, verse 11, uh, can someone please read verses 11 through 14? So, 
All right, so we have the incense being taken. So if Jesus, if the high priest, when we look at the high priest, we should be seeing Jesus, and he brings what before the altar for the mercy seat? The incense, which represents the prayers. prayer of the saints, right? He actually intercesses for us. He brings our prayers before God, right? That's kind of neat. Uh, another thing we can look at with incense here. Uh, turn to Isaiah chapter 6.
So n sense becomes a picture of Christ as an intercessor. Right? That's really what it is. N sense is Christ as an intercessor. Yes, in my mind, that makes it smell better. Right? Like, it does. Because then you smell it and you're like, oh, this is Jesus. <laughs> Sets church apart, you don't get it anywhere else. Again, not something that I'm going to just be like, okay, we're doing this, right? Uh, because then people would freak out and leave the church for the wrong reason. Uh, I've never heard that. Yeah. It's but that's intercessor. Yeah. But that's why the church forever kept it, right? It's Christ as intercessor. That's what it says. It's just amazing. Right? And so then when you're worshiping, you're not just so. American Christianity more and more, and I think this is why you have the contemporary movement, right? So the contemporary movement where you have like the rock band and everything, I think is a response to conservative Christianity only using their mouths. And that's it. Right? That's never how the church has been. The church has always used their mouth, their ears, their nose, their eyes, all encompassing to experience the throne room. Uh, this is why we have symbolism, so we can see the throne room of God. This is why we have singing and chanting, so you can hear the throne room of God. Right? Uh, and then that's why incense was there, so you could even smell the throne room. Right? Uh, it's this all immersive experience. Right? By the way, this is also the point behind, like when I, so at, at the, uh, Words of institution when I genuflect, go down on one knee. Again, it's, it's a movement with my own body showing that even these words are moving my body to it, right? Um, any questions, comments?
throughout the Old Testament, what does it mean when you see the peals of thunder, flashes of lightning, and earthquake? Who's there? God's there. God's there. Yahweh is there. Right? If you take this bowl of incense with the coals, you know, we already said, we already said this is a picture of Christ, and you're casting it to the earth, and then suddenly God's there on earth, what is this picture of? trumpets are being handed over, and now we have the trumpets blowing 
Again, do not think about this as in first this happens, then this happens, then this happens. This is a manifestation of Christ, a revealing of Christ throughout history. Right? And especially, and that, of course, the two high points when Christ is revealed is when there's two high points. Before he dies? Close. The first one would, would include all of that, right? When he's in the flesh and when he dies on the cross and when he ascends, right? So that's the first high point. When he comes back? And when he comes back, last day. Okay, can someone read uh, verses uh, 6? Uh, first, let's just do 6 through 6 and 7. Now the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet, and there followed hail and fire, mixed with the blood, and these were thrown upon the earth. And a third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned. Right. All right. So in these next few things, I, I wanted to get one instance. Now we're going to hear the next three. Um, I'm going to assert that all three of these things are actually the same event being described in different ways. The same kind of thing going on being described in different ways. So what? So that you lose trumpets, and what came down? Hail. Fire and blood, right? And what was the result? What was that? Third. Yeah, a third burn, right? A third burn. Right. All right, uh, the next one, uh, verse 8. The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown down into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood, a third of the living creatures of the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. All right, so what's thrown down this time? Yeah, a mountain. A mountain of fire. And what happened? Yeah, a third, a third of the sea was destroyed. Verse 10, the third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven blazing like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of the water. The names of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many people died from the water because it had been made bitter. What is Wormwood? Herb. Is it herb? And what's notable about it? It is very bitter. Right? Wormwood is not a... This is a thing that millennialism says. They say Wormwood is a meteor that we're waiting to crash on the earth. Wormwood is used to just point out the bitterness of it. Right? But anyways, what fell down? Star. Star. The star, and what happened? How many? A third. A third, yeah. A third of the rivers and water dried up were made bitter. All right, 12, the fourth angel blew his trumpets, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of their light might be darkened, and a third of the day might be kept from shining, and likewise, a third of the night. So this, so this time doesn't even say something necessarily came down, but what, again, what happened, though? A third of the rest of creation was struck. What's going on here? Anyone have any guesses yet? Judgment. Judgment, kind of. All right, let's read a few more passages and see if it starts to, to, to come together. Uh, real, we're just going to jump ahead in Revelation real quick to, to see uh, something. So go to Revelation chapter 12. <clears throat>
She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his head seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. Who's the dragon? Has anyone ever heard this? No. Yeah, we, we, we really associate the dragon with Satan. Satan, and again, he sweeps down a, a third, right? Sometimes we say those are the fallen angels. Other times it's just the effect that he has on creation that he's destroying, right? And then a little bit after this in chapter 12, we, we hear that Satan is cast down. Right? He's cast down. Real quick, one more, one more verse back in Luke. Uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, this is with the, with the sending out of the 72, and now this is when they're returning. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Any other guesses on what all of these are probably symbolizing? What's going on here? Yeah. It's Satan. It's Satan's subjection of the earth. His power upon the world. Right? And once we start looking at the rest of scripture, it's like it starts, oh, okay, I see it. Right? Yeah. All of these things represent Satan's subjection of the world. Right? And he's doing some damage. A third of all creation is being affected by this. Right? He's doing damage. Um, we'll leave there on that happy note for out of time. <laughs> but it's, uh, but yeah, but we, we can see that as us living in the world today, we're afflicted. Satan is actually afflicting people. Right? But we'll get some, some happy stuff later because then uh, Jesus will say that he did not give him authority to kill his, his people. Which, of course, what is, this is what Jesus says, right? Do not fear the one who can kill the body, but fear the one who can kill both body and soul, right? And so we'll see some of that going on, right? So even though he's afflicting creation, he does not have authority to kill. Kill eternal, which is great. Always remember the first, the, uh, um, the first seal, right? The very first seal, what's going on? What happens when the first seal gets broken? white horse comes out and he has a bow and he is the one who does what? He has done what? He continues to what? Conquer. Jesus conquered. He is conquered. Always keep this in mind, right? The war is already won even though all this other stuff is going on. The war is won. Something to keep in mind throughout all this. Something for us to keep in mind in this world when we suffer and are afflicted. The war is won. All right, any last questions or comments? All right, thanks for coming. We'll see you in worship.